you can hear me okay, but I want to show you how I can make a very simple picture frame, like this one, including the image itself. Now, this image, we didn't go and get this printed, no. All I did is I just printed it off my laser print on the computer that I did, just like this one here, for which we're going to do pretty much the same thing again. Here's what I prepared earlier, or should I say printed. And we're going to, effectively, what we're going to do is, because this image here is literally stuck onto this picture frame. And you can have any kind of wooden picture frame, if you like, the MDF, if you like. And, oh, hello, Kitka, how are you diddling? So basically what I've got here, in this case, is just a wooden picture frame that I've made and I've bonded on a picture that I've got created on the computer and lacquered once it's all dried and gone off, and lacquered onto the frame. But we're not doing this kind of frame. No, this is just an oak board with a very simple stand that is doweled onto the back. Well, I'm not doing that sort, because I, I haven't got a simple bit of wood to do this video with at the moment. So what I'm going to use is something else I've got kicking about, which is a piece of pine, which is not going to need, um, well, nothing. To, it's not going to need something to stand on, because, it, because it's got a nice wide base, it can stand up on its own. So first of all, what I'm going to do in the first part of this video, I'm going to, um, first of all, actually, before I say that, can any everybody hear me okay? Hello, oh, Patrick, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, if you hear me okay, please let me know. <laughs> um, I've got my little radio mic on today. So here's the image that I'm going to use, and here is the pretty ropey-looking board, which I already had. Oh, sounds good. Nice one. Cheers, Kit Kat. Um, and here's the ropey old board that I had kicking about. It was, actually was an old tread of a, of a rubbish old staircase I took out for somebody. And so what it is, it's literally just a load of laminated up pine boards. But for what I'm going to use it for, I think it's going to be fine. I, I know I, I've got something in mind for it, so it's not a problem. So first of all, we've got to bond that to that, or that to that, whatever way we'll do. And all we use for that is literally wallpaper paste. That's all I use. So first of all, let's, let's mix up some wallpaper paste which I got here. Yoo-hoo, wallpaper based. Oh, can't be bad. Oh, cheers, Patrick. All right, so first of all, we're gonna mix up our paste. I've got a little pot over here with some glue, glue, some water already in it. And we're just gonna sprinkle some wallpaper paste into that to create our paste. Now, this is only the first stage of that one I'm gonna do today. Um, but then I'm gonna fin finish a previous project, which we did in a, a different video. Now, in a different video, I mentioned about reinforcing the corners, so that's what we're gonna do on the actual picture frame itself. But first of all, I want to, well, bond that to that. And it's a bit like wallpaper, literally, just a little of wallpaper. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a bit of that adhesive in there. But don't overdo it, it doesn't want to be too thick. And I'm just gonna apply it with a brush so we need to stir as we go. I don't want it to be overly thick. Okay, there's plenty in there. I might have put a bit of water in there. I might have done it too thick. We'll see in a minute. Because it's got to, got to dissolve. I don't want too thin either. I just don't want lumps, because lumps aren't good. Lumps are hard to get rid of when you're actually trying to do your... This is okay. I might need... Yeah, I'm just going to put maybe put a little more water in that. I don't want it too, too thick. That's a little better. You see the sort of consistency. That's going to thicken a bit more as the... Um, still looks grainy if you look. You see it's still a bit grainy. That basically, that gray, what you see is look, looks like grain. That will dissolve and thicken it further. So a little bit more water than that. See, if it's too thick, what happens is you find it very, very difficult to get that flat without any bubbles onto that. And you've got to do your usual thing. Once we've put adhesive on there, we have to leave it a few minutes to allow that adhesive to, well, for the paper to expand. Just like you would do on wallpaper. Otherwise, you'll end up with bubbles. Even more, I've put way too much powder in there. That's what happens when you wing it. Go. 
it's getting there. So I'm going to leave it for a few minutes just to do its thing. Like I say, this is just a piece of old pine. That was part of a tread. Um, pretty crappily made, to be honest, but that was what it was. That's where it come from. Someone bodged it up themselves. Look, there's a loads of screws that have been filled. But I'm not worried about that. At this stage, all I want to do is literally bond the image onto this board. So that's what we're going to do. How are we doing with this adhesive? How is it doing? Is it still too thick? Ooh, I don't know. It's actually not too bad now. Not too bad. Probably on the thick, bit on the thick side. And I'm actually going to paste it using this as my... Yeah. Paste it onto there. Well, I'll put the paste onto the paper first, obviously. So here is the print. And this has literally just been printed. I used, I used my Finti Photo and I, had to I wanted a high key image. The problem is when you do it this way and you keep everything in the mid ranges regarding the, the, um, the darks and the lights, what you'll find is um, if you don't do it high key, like with all the whites coming through like so, what happened is it just look, look, look really muddy when you do this. So what we want to try and create is something a bit more sort of like that, you see. It gives it a bit of a sepia tone as well, which is quite cool. But when we've finished it and that's all dried off and I've done all my trimming and finishing on the edge of, these, of this board, what will happen is um, I'll obviously clean it all up and I'll clean up all the edges. I'll even router the edges where the actual print is. So we create quite a nice little, no, it feels tactile anyway. And then we'll lacquer the whole thing, and that, including this, but it must be completely dry first. I haven't done this before on pine before, so I'm a, I'm a little... No, I have done it on pine before, but not laminated pine like this. These old floorboards looking at it. Right, so we're going to apply our wallpaper paste. D -d 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 -d. It don't matter if you get onto the face of it or anything like that. I'm not worried about that at all. Because I've already got it on there. <laughs> So we get it onto the paper first, and then I want to make sure, I don't want that, obviously I don't want it to dry out, but equally I don't want it to be so flippin' wet, it's, I end up with like big bubbles of glue behind the, um, the paper, which would make it hard to actually stick it down. So now I've got my glue on there, I might have to reapply some glue, like you would do if you were doing wallpaper, and sometimes that's the case, unless using that vinyl stuff that you dunk in the water. So I'm gonna put that somewhere where it ain't gonna hurt, I'll put it here, on top of the bombs away. That will be soaking in and the paper will expand, just like you would do if you're doing wallpapering. And now I'm going to apply some of this adhesive onto this pine as well. well. I don't want the dryness, it's a bit like size in your wall when you're wallpapering I suppose. I don't want the wood head sucking the moisture out too quickly. I have done this a few times now and it does actually work really well. And all the, I don't, if you've been through my house, I think I might have shown before, but I've done some images, some quite big hit pictures actually, do, using the same method, topographies, and um, they look really cool. The beauty, the beauty about doing it this way is it doesn't cost you a bit of an arm and a leg and printing, and I really like the black and white look. It's not got an everybody's cup of tea, obviously, some people want colour. There's no reason why you can't do it in colour. The only thing I would say is make sure if you're using, well, there goes my compressor, if you're using an inkjet printer, make sure that the inks are colour fast. So the colour fast, they're um, oh, permanent, so they don't run. Because that could be a bit of a problem. And you might find you'll be doing it again. So I can tell now that this has actually expanded a little bit because the paper started to get wrinkly. But I don't want to stick it down to 100% certain it's wrinkly enough. A bit like me, Let's push it out of the way there. I've got to be careful I don't make it dirty, you see, as well, so I just use that up there. I don't want to make the face of it dirty. I'm fairly confident. See, what's happening is it's soaking in the moisture and it's expanding. Now, what we're going to be doing with this other picture frame in a moment, which we made the other day, which was for... Bombs away laxatives! <laughs> As is, well, as, you, as you do. Um, what we need is to reinforce these corners. Now, in the picture frames, they do it in various ways. One is they'll use a um, special stapler, like a 90 degree stapler, and they'll put a metal staple in there, quite deep, and that is the joiner for the corner. I don't particularly like that, it looks just a bit, you know, it's just cheap, isn't it? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wooden slip in at an angle, but I've made a jig to do that, so it makes, makes it a lot easier, which we'll be doing in a moment. 
But I think that it's a bit drier in places. No, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Da, 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 da. Let's just make sure. Nope, that's fine. Always worry that the image has gone a bit crabby. Let's get that out of the way. That's your seat. That big white bit is just where it's been filled, I believe. So now I've got to stick that on there. And yes, that is quite a lot of this, but it's a wood shavings. <laughs> got to make sure I'm all at the top. Be careful at this stage because you can tear the paper. Because it's only, pr it's only um, printer paper, so it is about 90 gram or 80 gram, whatever it is. You've got to make sure. It makes some really lovely gifts doing this because you can put these images on anything you make. It doesn't have to be a picture, does it? You know, let's say, for instance, you made, I don't know, for instance, uh, argument's sake, you made yourself an incense burner. There's no reason why, uh, yeah, with an incense burner, there's no reason why you can't put a picture or an image, could be a dog, it could be anything, onto the incense burner in the same technique. It doesn't cost anything. Now what you'll get is you'll get the grain of the wood to come through as well, which I actually like. It does take a little while to dry, so um, I'll finish this project off in another video. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Just very gently. The ideal thing is to have something to put on top of this to actually run the roller over, but um, just in case you're transferring dirt over from the roller. You don't really want to do, do you? It gives us kind of an almost oldie worldy kind. Of, although the actual image isn't oldie worldy, but it gives a kind of a bit of an an oldish look to it. So I'm just going to grab some tissue. Talking. Giant roll, kitchen roll that's no longer giant because I've been using it. You be careful at this stage. If you start dragging anything over, you can like just lift it. So you've got to be a little bit careful. All I'm trying to do is make sure it's making contact all over. Obviously, could be, obviously when it dries, it'll just yeah, that come away, wouldn't it? And you see here, well, I've been rubbing it a little bit. Some of the um, the darkness is not quite as dark as it was. So you have to be a little bit careful. I kind of like that relief though, if I'm going to be honest. You know, where you, like, for instance, you paint stuff that I've done on here, and I sanded this through, get, so I exposed some of the wood. It, it gives it that kind of ageing look to it. If you don't want it, it has to be very, you have to be a little bit more careful than I was just then. So I'm folding over the edges like so, just making sure that we've got contact on all the edges, because that's obviously the bits where we're going to have a problem. Now, if you're wondering what that noise is in the background, it's my gas heater. <laughs> Let me show you. It's a gas bottle heater, and it's this thing here. Now, if I'm only coming in here briefly, I'll whack this thing on because it, you know, it heats the space up really, really quickly until the wood burner kicks in, which is over there. But um, I'm not going to light it because we're going out later, and I don't really want to leave it on. Put you back down here. Oh, there's somebody at the door. Oh, I've got someone to, someone's come to say hello. Oh, thank you. Someone's brought me a drink. It's a baby. She didn't, she didn't call. This is little Emily, this is. Say hello, Emily. Say hello, Emily. Hello. She said, what's going on? Oh, she's got boogie does. Oh, lovely. Oh. <laughs> Keep those germs away from me. Don't want those germs, no. <laughs> can you put a screen protector on my phone without any air bubbles? I, I can. There's one on here at the moment, a glass one. I always do them wet. So I don't, I don't, when I, uh... <laughs> There's no way you can do it without wrinkles. Okie dokie. <laughs> 
No, it's just ordinary inkjet paper. It's literally the stuff you, you use to do all your documents with. That's all it is. 80, 80 or 90 gram um, ink, you know, inkjet, or in this case, is a laser print. Be careful with inkjet, unless the actual ink is fast, be careful with inkjet printers because it can bleed. But just do a little test. Let, make sure it's dried first, so just do a little test. It should be fine. Oh, Glasgow. <laughs> my little granddaughter, Emily. Well, I have many. I don't know what it is about my family, I just make girls. Ooh. We've only got one boy. They're all girls. So this little two here, this is some um, little Tochi and my little Grace. Now that's little Tochi and Grace earlier. So that little Grace, she could, she's doing really well at school, unbelievably well. Don't know where she gets it from, not for me, I, I'm, I'm certain. But yeah, she's um, doing really well. She, so I'm very, really, really, really pleased with her progress. Just make sure that's clean. You don't, you don't, if you do get any bits on, you don't want them to stick, stick onto it, you see. So, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it alone. If I keep playing with it, I'm, I won't make it better, I'll make it worse. So, I'll keep an eye on it. And if I find it lifts in place, I'll, I'll just whack a bit more glue under it and down again. If it fails, I'll just print that one off and give it another go, don't I? You know? So, I'm going to put that to one side. I have to admit, that um, heater, don't half work. I forgot I had it. Caroline reminded me that I had that gas heater. So I hunted and it was on the top of them. It was on the top of the roof of this, uh, well, it would be on top of our ceiling actually, I suppose. But it certainly does work. But it takes all the oxygen out <laughs> and moisture. So yeah. I don't, I'm not sure the missus should have already bought me a beer. Not when I'm working in here, no. <laughs> What's she like? I love you, darling. I'll give you a beer so you can chop your fingers off. Oh, on the other channel, that I was, um, God, I was struggling yesterday with that um, OBS. It's a software for streaming, so you can do live streaming and like that, if anyone doesn't know. But it's, um, yeah, I was having a little bit of do with it. You probably noticed if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> I remember all flustered. I just lost my whole trade of thought. I didn't know what I was doing. I was relying on your comments, to, you know, on the chat to actually keep the conversation going. I had all the stuff planned, and then my ma the mouse broke. <laughs> so that's just from the note with the thumb thing. I'm no good with those women. Pad things are terrible. And also because I don't want to the, the, the laptop right in front of my face. That's, oh no. Nah. It's um. Yeah, my arms aren't that long either. Right, so the next thing is we need to do something with this. Like I said, it's a little picture frame, we made out of pine, we just put a little rebate on behind just to take the image. But I'm going to reinforce the corners, just to make them a darn sight stronger. And also it becomes an accent piece as well. Now you probably notice that I've actually sanded it again with some very fine sandpaper, and I'm not actually going to put any more black paint on there. I want that sort of... Um, Worn sort of look, retro sort of look, sort of a bit of relief. So that's my plan with that, and that's what I'm going to do next. So we're going to go over to the table saw, and using my jig, we're going to cut some slots in each corner, and then we're going to apply a little slip of timber into the slot. And what that'll do is it will, when it dries, you effectively then got, I suppose, a form of a tenon really going across the corner, and it also adds a bit of character into the corners. Instead of just looking like a mitered frame, you end up with a bit of detail. You can either keep that detail exposed so you can see it, or you can um, literally just paint it in or whatever you want to do with it. You know, everyone's taste is different. That's the only thing I can explain why the missus married me. Yeah. So I obviously had no taste. <laughs> Poor woman. Right. In some ways it's easier working off the phone than the actual OBS software with your laptop. 
There's so much setting up you have to do, especially we're not used to it. That comes set nature to me in, in time. Hopefully, things will improve. I don't have to. <laughs> right. I suppose that's if I can keep up with all shorts, because quite frankly, YouTube has been a real pain in the neck for me. I'm getting hardly any views at the moment. But anyway, saying that, I don't get many views on this channel at the moment. But there you go, we'll see if we can build it up, see what we can do. Anyway, that is a big cutty thing called a circular saw. And that big cutty thing can cut your fingers off, so you don't want, you don't want that to happen. Well, it wouldn't be a great idea. I don't like that idea. Anyway, I'm going to turn that heater off. Let's do that. And all you have to do, you've got two choices. You either just turn it up, pull the plug out, or turn it off on the side, or just turn the gas off. Well, I always turn the gas off. Because, you know, if you look at that thing. Oh. Obviously, it uses quite a bit of gas. It also burns all the oxygen out of the room, but also puts moisture into the room at the same time. So, we can now unplug it or just... Oh, I got that. The noise has stopped. It's just my noise now. So what I'm going to do is now, is using a jig, we're going to create some slots in that, well, yeah, in that picture frame to make some room. Now, I've been working on the house, and because of that, I've been sort of like bringing things in and out of this workshop constantly and make a complete and utter mess. My bench is a mess. Everything's a mess at the minute. But hey -oh, you can't make an omelette without breaking some eggs, apparently. So I keep telling myself... So this is my jig. If you look at that, that's it's very simple. We have a little strip of timber that runs in this key slot here. Now that key slot is parallel with the blade. Now as you can see, that blade is quite high. That's too high. I cut right through the flipping frame. That'll be no good. So I'm going to lower the blade until it's at its highest point in this V here. So there's a slot there. The blade will be poking out of that slot. I do like making jigs. As anyone down in Ginger Island will probably realise or already know, I set that blade down. I really got to upgrade this tool. I really would like one of them super saws. The ones that don't chop your fingers off. They sense moisture, and as soon as they sense moisture, the blade thro throws the blade out of the way. Literally. It costs you about 70 quid every time it happens, though. Eh? You've got to replace a whole mechanism. But they're an excellent saw, but also quite a good idea not chop your fingers off. So there we go, we've got that on there, like so. That is running over the blade all the way through, or as far, or as, far as it needs to go, which is there. So I literally just. I'll bring the saw around, you might see better actually, see exactly what's happening. Hopefully it doesn't fall over when I bring it down to there. If you can see that slot, you see that slot there? That's where the blade that pokes through that slot. And we'll create a, a, a slot in the corner of the picture frame. I can't really, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to transfer you over to a different tripod. So you can see. And also, the vibration of the actual table saw will probably make the well camera fall on the floor. In this case, it's my mobile phone. I do have a quick release. They're so handy, aren't they? So I've got a little quick release on top of that one that I put on there. And I've got a little quick release on top of here as well. And I've got a quick release on my little handheld one over there. So it's just going to transfer from one thing to the next. But there is something I am going to be investing in as soon as I can, when well, I've got some money, there is, is um, not a strict it's like a stream deck and what it is it allows you to have multiple cameras set up and all you have to do is press a button and then you just move from one camera to the next so if i come to the saw i can then transfer i press a button and all of a sudden the saw becomes live or we have multiple views so you can have like four images running all at the same time if there's more than one thing going on it's unlikely because it's only me <laughs> unless the missus helping that is so there are, that is my jig so i can grab the frame and the little fence on the side here, this is literally just my little my fence, which is literally just clamped on. And that dictates whereabouts that slot is going to be. So I want it somewhere in the middle. So I'm looking at this here, it is not far off the middle. If anything, it, ooh, hell, if I go over a little bit there. Now it's in the middle. So that's cut then will be in the middle of that picture frame. 
So all I do is now I've got, I've got a choice. I can say, well, I'm going to hold it really tight and push it through, which, to be honest, would probably be perfectly fine to do so. Or I could get a clamp. Am I talking like a child? I think I am, aren't I? <laughs> I'll get a clamp. So it is nice when I do the videos for the woodworking is because it's like I'm doing stuff I really like doing anyway, so I do like playing with bits of wood. The only thing in since Brexit it's really damaged my woodworking business, so it's like uh, I have to have a reason to come in half the time. But with if I say okay I'll come in here just to make the videos, well then it's not, it's not really a problem, is it? So that is a reason. But I've got to make some need, need a project, don't you? So as you can see, I have a picture frame. There's one I prepared earlier. You, you just bring it up a bit closer, as you can see, there you go. And we're going to run that through the saw, right? or push it gently through the saw. You ever feel mad? It's a crazy thing. No. Just, just gently. What I'm do is putting some wax in the slot, so it feels a little bit stiff, but it doesn't matter. It'll be fine. So we're going to turn it on, the buttons there. We've got a, we've got a knee knock up here. So there's a button on the side here. Big red one, so you can hit it with your leg to turn it off if you have to. In a hurry. And then you've got the green button, which turns it on, like so. And I've got zero clearance in it at the moment, which you don't actually need. I'm going to take that out. For this job, I don't need it. And I'll probably do make a new one of those. Quite easy to do. I'm just going to put the... That's the better one to use whenever you're doing anything that doesn't require zero clearance, because what it does is it makes sure it carries the muck down below the blade and keeps the cut clear. Whereas when you use zero clearance, there's quite a possibility the dust will get stuck and doesn't clear and cause other problems. Right, so here we go. Oh no! It's fast! Scary. So this is when you hope the frame just cuts through nice and neatly and doesn't actually um, explode on you. If it does, it makes good doing. That might go viral then. It's all the way through. Now obviously you don't want to be putting your fingers there as you're pushing it through because there's a blade, as you can see, it's starting to come through at that point. So a good idea, and what I should have done with this jig, is incorporate more wood. It could just have been laminated up the timber, so you, when you first cut, you're cutting through the bit of wood and that becomes your guard. So you, you don't want to be, um, I'm aware of it obviously, but other people, if you make one for yourself, that's what I would do. So we take this off, we'll see whether or not I've actually cut deep enough. And that I have, I'm happy with that. About right, it's going about, oh, it's just maybe a bit deeper actually. I'm gonna go a bit deeper. So put that back in. Clamp back on. And control. That's more like it. Yeah, that's pretty good. So at the moment, it's coming to about that far through the actual. Oh, well, just over halfway into the joint. So we'll do that on each one. Two gone, two to go. I'm sure you're getting the gist of the idea behind this. And obviously, if I was doing it without being, you know, live on YouTube, obviously it'd be a lot quicker. It'd take seconds. I just want to make sure that you can absorb the moment. And back round again. On to the last one.
So this little Bessie clamp, I've had that donkey's yes, it's really warm though. I've got some other ones as well though. The slow and control. As soon as you know that it's finished with the saw, turn it off. You don't want fast spinny things, you know, continually running when you know we're in there to keep an eye on what's going on. So there we have another slot. There's a slot in each and every corner. Oh, but what are we going to do with that, I wonder? I hear you ask. You didn't? Okay. I'll shut up then. <laughs> Oh, I've got another granddaughter. Oh, yeah, she wants to be on your show. Uh, Hello. Your show. Oh, this is live. Are you allowed? Oh, this is my other granddaughter, this is. This is Sophia. And she's... What are you dressed up as? Uh, her but The picture just was ruined then. Yeah, ruined? You look a bit dirty as well. Have you been making things? No, I'm just... I'm going to go and I've read it. Was it? Did you get paint on it? But you, you felt you must wear it today. Yeah. yeah you, anyway, you, I got heels. Got heels? I had heels for Christmas you, and a giant bus bunk bed. And a giant <laughs> bunk bed, she did. She got a bus bed. Now, my son over there, Dizzy, aka Darren, nope. <laughs> the one with no teeth in the front because he had an accident with a giant bit of wood. It's got nothing to do with me, I promise you. No. Has it? No, good. Also, <laughs> industrial accident. And it, he, he, well, it, like, Father Christmas bought this, this big bus bed. It's like a big red London bus. And Father Christmas left it in the, in the living room. He didn't bother taking it to the bedroom. Oh, no. no, he didn't, did he? He, he left it downstairs, didn't he? Yes, the big bus mean, bed. And my daddy has to <laughs> get it to part. Yeah. Did, did you have to make so Santa Claus made it first no, in your living the room? The, oh, the elves did. Oh, okay, so that, well, you you know Santa Claus is a master craftsman. He's a he's a master toy maker. But he enlists his elves, and they they obviously helped him put it together. Yay! Hmm. Yay. And, and but what did he do? He just gave Daddy a whole load of work, didn't he, Diz? Oh, yeah. I know. And he had to cut, get the thing upstairs into the bedroom. Now there was some plans that was going to be like partly um, disassembled and taken outside and put through uh, the window. Well, French windows in bedrooms generally are relatively small in old farmhouses. No, he didn't. He took it up the seat. But no, he took it completely apart again. You thought that, you know, Santa and his elves would have done the right thing. Grandpa, they're trying to say goodbye. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I've been told. Say goodbye, Grand. You can say goodbye to everybody. Don't see everybody. Also, I can whistle fast. Goodbye. You can whistle back and boy. Go on. Can you say goodbye to Frankie? I don't think they can hear you. It's down here. <laughs> in second, what's in there? <laughs> doesn't sound like a whistle, it just sounds like the wind. You got wind? No. Oh, <laughs> and we've got the other one over there. Can say guitar as well? Ta ta ta. I'm in the. I digress. <laughs> so, yeah, mate, be good. Oh, what was I doing? Oh, oh, I lost complete track of what I'm doing. <laughs> God, that pesky Santa. What's he like? This thing, it's like, it's like a... Um, if you think like a captain... No, it's not a captain's bed. It's literally like bunk beds. And it's a big red thing. And there's a London bus on the side. And it's really quite cool, actually, I have to admit. They're quite expensive. But they managed to get one, a um, second-hand one that's in absolutely immaculate condition. That's pretty cool. Dee, 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 dee. <laughs> Yeah, they are a bit tired. I think they had a busy um, few days, to say the least. Um, we went around for Christmas Day, and uh, oh god, I'm bending my head, spinning it was afterwards. The noise! I'm not used to it. And I've had six kids. Biscuits! Yeah, they do like biscuits. Yeah, we all have to work. Yeah, um, 
Yeah, Dizzy, Dizzy's married to um, a Welsh girl who happens to live in France as well. So, yeah. And it was, oh God, the wedding day, it was so hot. I mean, I, I was wearing this blue suit. So I, I did, I'll I tell you, so I, I, I looked the part. But I had this blue suit on, and it was literally, oh my God, sweat. And then my back, because I was doing a lot of the video work, and my back was completely, completely sweaty. I had my drone in the air, and it kept losing connection because it just failed. You know, the um, it was too hot for it. So that was a bit white. I was a DJI Phantom Four, and it's just yeah, that was, that was oh, that was struggling. But we did, yeah, it was pretty cool. Did some pretty cool videos. Yeah, that's the one who lives in France. Now he was working at a woodyard just down the road here. Um, oh, what's the place called uh, Francois Bron. Francois Brun, and it's um, in that particular woodyard, they they do posts and oh they do all sorts of timbers and a lot of it gets shipped around all over the place. Got goes to Holland and you know, to the Netherlands and what have you. And um, the machine kicked back, and the time he was working on the post machine, literally just putting the points on the ends of the po uh, posts. Oh you know, just round, just all the bits of chestnut. You chuck them in the machine, and these big blades go there, like that, slice, slice. And you pull it out and don't. But it threw, him, it threw the lump of wood back at him, into his face. Oh God, all his head all bruised. Bust his teeth, you know, he didn't break anything of this. All his front teeth went. And um, silly boy, he hasn't pursued it. Because they're supposed to be insured for this. So he still hasn't had his teeth done. This is years ago now. But, uh, probably three years ago, two or three years ago. Silly fella. But there you go. You can't tell him. He's... he's He's a good lad, but he's actually he's a very good lad to be fair to him. So okay, anyway, I digressed after that. And what was I doing? I had a little bit of wood here somewhere that I was going to use, which has now disappeared. So what have I done with that? Oh, now I've got to go on the hunt for my little piece of wood that I prepared earlier, repeated style. Is it over here? No. If it's not, I think I found it. Although it looks like it might be too thin, so I might have to cut another one. The idea being is that we've got this corner there, and that will slot into that. Actually, it's, no, it's not too bad. It's a little bit on the loose side. It is a bit loose, so I might actually just cut another one. It might not all be too loose, actually. No, it is too loose. So we, well, that's what we're going to use the zero clearance on the table saw, and we'll cut another slip. There's no point struggling, is there? No. I'll use that for glue sticks later for mixing my cascamite. So I'll move this out of the way. It generally goes up, up there normally, which I'll put up there later. Um, we've used oak for that one. And here's the piece of oak that I was using earlier. And here's my zero clearance. And the idea about the zero clearance is if you cut anything that's thin, if you're using this insert where the blade comes through, obviously where the blade comes through, everything Thin bits of wood can fall down behind it or beside it, and that's not very good. So you create this is what we call a zero, well, one I've made earlier, a zero clearance. Every so often we have to chuck this away, and this is getting to that stage now because it's wide there now, and that's where bits of wood have been tried to force down the edge of the blade. So that needs replacing, but we'll do that later. What I might make is actually a jig to make my zero clearance so I can make it ready quickly. Um, there's a few silly designs about this saw, actually. One is this. I've got to show you. Right. So we've got this zero clearance in there, but if you push too far hard at the back here, yeah, it can pop up at the front. You know, because there's the support there, 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 and there, but nothing at the back here. So when you bring a bit of wood for you, are not careful, you push too hard there or here, you can pop the ends up. That's quite tight, that zero clearance. It doesn't work. It doesn't really happen with that one. But it does if I put this in. The standard plate, that one. As you see, look, that's not that's that's a really stupid design. It needs another support at the back here, really, or you, and that one at the front. So it's a bit nutty. So let's get that out of the way. Let's put the zero clearance back in, just so you can pretty much see why the ones I make fit better than the original ones. Right, so that literally would go down the side of the blade, but you cut, there's no room for it to go down the side of the blade. So that's why you do zero clearance. So I'm going to put you back onto the other tripod. 
think about these projects I'm doing at the moment, because look, you know, if I edited the video, obviously I could then do it from start to finish. And talking about that, at five o'clock I had a video go live. Me using a little router and hand, um, in the same style as the thermometer video, but I made another video using the um, little palm router instead of the big older. Because somebody in one of the previous videos mentioned about using the palm router, so I thought oh, no, I'll make a video using the palm router. Let's get the blade a bit lower. I don't really want any more than a quarter of an inch or six mil. Stick that at the top of the saw at the blade ready. You don't want it too low because it can ride over. Especially if you do plywood because plywood could be a bit of a problem with that. So that is about three mil. Let's double check the slot. I can pretty much wing it anyway to be honest. I can just that is pretty much three mil anyway. That is three mil. So if I do it that, let's see. If it's not right, I'll just cut another one. The blade in there is a CMT blade, they're quite a good blade. Um, now, I don't know if you noticed, when I was using this push stick then, I pushed a bit of wood through, didn't I? I didn't da 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 but then I did that, so I could pull it out of the way. And how that make, what makes that possible is that little brass screw that I just chucked in the end. Now, I've done brass, because brass is not going to damage the blade if it does get hit by the blade. Now, this one, obviously, this push stick needs replacement, really. It's like a lot of things in my workshop. <laughs> but that's all it is, and if you see, the point only just points, points, it pokes through, and that grips the bit of wood. So that way, I don't have to go near the blade to get clear stuff away from the back of the blade. I can just do that. And as you see, my saw has no, if you're aware of saws, well, I use, no one else uses a saw but me. There's no guard, and there's no riving knife. Now, the riving knife isn't my choice. The riving knife is because when I'm doing blind cuts, I have to remove it. Um, because the type of rive knife, that's right, it's more of a split than a rive knife, it comes too high, higher than the blade, so you can't do a rebate cut on your saw. Really bad design. And needs to say, when, that, when it's something so badly designed as that, you don't put it back again, <laughs> because you've got to take it off again. And it doesn't come off easy or quickly, it's a faff to get on and off. It's too bold, but hard to get to. So um, half the time it just stay, stays off. And the guard fixes to the rive knife. Really rubbish design. It's a shame because the rest of the saw is pretty darn good. So I need to come up with a solution for the riving knife um, so it's attached to the rise and fall mechanism of the blade itself. Whereas the original one is a fixed unit. It doesn't rise and fall, it stays at the same height. It, it tilts with the blade, but it doesn't rise and fall, which makes it useless. For me, anyway. Now the riving knife, the idea, but I have to say that's more like it. If anything, it's still a little bit on the fixed side, but I can do that with a little bit of sandpaper. It's probably not, that one's probably okay. That one's perfect, that one. That's one we run through twice. So I'll probably just use a bit of sandpaper. So we just tap it in tight. And then it'll be limp to amount of glue. And that means we'll get a really good fit. So that's, that's okay, I'm gonna leave it at that. I could cut that one a little bit smaller, but then it'll be too thin. <laughs> I'm not gonna win. Um, the purpose of arriving off. So the thing that you've got of this piece of metal at the back here, and it's a, it should be slightly narrower than the width of the cut. And the width of the cut, we call the kerf, is the, this, is the thickness of the tooth. And this is a teeth, we've got a tungsten carbide toothed circle saw blade. So these bits here are tungsten carbide because they're extremely hard and they're brazed on, or sometimes laser welded, onto the disc itself. And the beauty about that is, um, they, they, you don't have to keep sharpening them. And also you don't have, See, with a old-fashioned type blade, there'd be like a bit of a twist in each tooth, in each direction. This type of blade is far superior. And the actual width of the cut is from either side, what you could call the kerf of that tooth. So the rive knife generally is slightly narrow, thinner than the width of the cut. And as you drive your piece of wood through, 
that riving knife is in the, the saw cut and it prevents the wood from being able to nip the side of the actual saw blade itself, the, the blank of the saw blade. If that happens, what can happen is, because this is lifting here, moving that direction, it's cutting that direction, so that effectively this is trying to lift. So if you've got a piece of wood here, you're pushing it through, it's trying to lift it at the back. But with a riving knife, it won't be pinching on the blade, hence it won't be gripping, and it won't try and lift the piece of wood. That's the purpose of a riving uh, knife or a splitter. So what I tend to do, if I'm doing any big stuff, because I haven't got a riving knife in the saw at the moment, I've really got to find a solution. I'm not sure, certain how I'm going to do it just yet. But because I haven't got a riving knife, I use wedges. So if I'm doing a big bit of wood where it could nip on the blade, as, a saw, as, as I drive, this still had a use to be done. In the United States, it used to be done like a lot. Now it's actually a requirement to have a riving knife on, on your saw. Um, like it is here. <laughs> In, in Europe and, and the UK. So, well, it's still Europe, isn't it? But anyway, let's not go there. <laughs> um, so basically, what I, do, I run my wedges in and it, it stops the, the actual spring of the board. Because when you, if you've got a piece of timber and you've got two sides of its grain, so you've got one side going that way. So if you cut for your tree, you've got your rings. So it's like, so it creates tension down the middle of the board. So as you try and cut down the middle of the board, it'll either go spring outwards, which that's not a problem, but you end up with a bendy bit of wood anyway, or it springs inwards, which then nips the blade. Anyway, I digressed. So let's go and stick this in. Do, 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 do. Let's put this over here first. I'm only going to be using a bit of PVA glue. I'm not using anything fancy. I'm not going to be mixing up any cascamite or anything like that because it's time I've mixed up for that. There's such a tiny, tiny amount we need. There isn't really much point. Not for that job anyway. Casper is great if you're doing waterproof. You know, it's got to be waterproof. Okay, that's over there. Put you over there. Do, do, do. Oh, it's them. <laughs> right, okay, there we are. So, that's the pitch frame. And these are going to be our little reinforcing slips. No, you can put it in the actual vice. But yet again here, I can't, I'm going to have to put these in. Then we're going to have to come back to it again another day because I've got to let it dry off again. So I'll make it a part of my next, another video. So first of all, we need to cut these, ideally. I thought, you know, it's no good just cut, trying to cut that while it's actually like so. It just makes things awkward. So I've got to create a few little short bits. How will we do that? I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's cheat. Let's do it on saw! We just need four little... Bits. Oh, another bitey thing. So I'm going to just cut off four little bits. That is my DeWalt radial arm saw, which is basically another circle saw, but the mount above your wood and it's on a rail here and there's three big rollers in there like um ball race rollers and they can slide across that rail now a lot of people hate these things because they scare the hell out of them and i understand why because they can grab and chop your fingers off but if your blade is sharp and you set them up correctly <laughs> You won't have a problem because I've never had a problem with it. I just am um, very cautious of it. Which, you know, if you make sure that you're aware that the thing can hurt you, it shouldn't hurt you. Right, so that's a bit of PVA. Now some of these are going to be a bit on the old thick side. So that'll tap in there nicely. That one will, and that one will tap in there nicely. So there's a bit of glue on there. Make sure you've got it on all surfaces. I'm only using a little bit of um. Screw fix stuff, I think this is, what's that, I can't remember what it's called now. It's not screw fix, um, oh, what's it called now? Ever, ever build, ever build, that's it. I've got a code, I can't remember the code now. I'm losing my mind, I am. So much stuff going on in my head, like, you know. I've filled that up with a load of um, negative stuff, I think. Be positive, it's Christmas. New Year's coming. Do -de 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 -de. Hard to be positive when you can't get old materials. So I'm just going to tap it into the other side. 
It's all oozing out. Not a good ooze. Don't go away, so we'll go to the next bit. I might have been a bit overzealous with well, that, to be fair. Do, 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 do. So what, if, if you imagine what's happened here, we've actually created a joint. You know, with a actual physical bit of wood in that joint. There you go. That's all the way in. That will go in a bit further. Be a little bit careful. You don't overdo your, you don't break your joints, basically, I'm trying to say. If you overdo it, you'll... Shouldn't be rocky. It's like compression the glue. Like the glue itself is so compressed behind there, it's like it's stopping the, it go together. So I'm just going to steal some of this glue from elsewhere, which is dribbling out all over the place. Put it over there. I'm just going to be back. Those actually, what I've done, I've, these two here, I've cut them a little bit on the short side. So I'm going to just cut a couple more. That's better. So a bit more glue. And this PVA I've got here, I've actually watered it down a little bit. I use um, boiled water or, or water out of a bottle even. It's okay. I don't use um, any water that's potentially got any rubbish in it like shit. Oh, sorry, that's only in the UK, isn't it? I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think our water's got E. coli in it. <gasps> did I say it out loud? I did, didn't I? Oh no! <laughs> Hard not to go there. Right. I don't seem to talk about that much at the moment, but hey People must be happy to have that in their water. Right, so we've just got to tap that in there. Look. So really, the best thing you do is put it in the vice. Because then you'll be supporting both sides. When you're tapping it, you'll be supporting both sides, both joints here and there. Instead of actually putting force through the other joints when you're tapping it. But, purpose of the video. Susan! You've got to make sure it goes all the way down. It's not hydraulic, the glue seems to hydraulic a little bit. I, don't, I wouldn't have thought it did on that, but it seems to. Although I lost my mind. Right, so what we've got here is we've got four little joint reinforcers put in, one in that corner, one in that corner, one in that corner, and one in that corner. And what's going to happen now is, that obviously will strengthen the joint on each corner. But once it's gone off, I'll just cut them off, probably with like a little uh, small dovetail saw or um, Japanese saw or something like that, and then sand them flat, just gently, because I don't want to take too much of the black off, and then we'll... Um, Look at actually mounting the image, the picture, inside the frame. So there's that. I'm just going to... That joint there is opened up a little bit, so I'm just going to put the glue in there and clamp that. As you do. It can happen. All that banging. I only need one lock. I thought one on there, one out the way. Is there one? Yes, there is. What screws two are, just enough to pull that together. First of all, I need to make sure the glue is going right down that joint. So I'm going to use this ruler, which has already got glue on it, which is really ought to be cleaned off. No, I'm not, because it don't fit. <laughs> a bit of card or a bit of paper will do. Yeah, I'm quite looking forward to getting one of them um, multiple camera things. It's, it's made by a company called Black Magic, who also makes the software that I use when editing my videos. DaVinci Resolve. They do a lot of um, high-tech film equipment. But they brought out this, what they call something mini or something, um, something, I can't what it's called now. Anyway, this um, thing it allows you to operate multiple cameras, which sounds very interesting. It's all a fair bit of money, but it's not, it's 
not horrendous. I think about 300, about 300 um, euros. Or they do another one which you can stream direct. Might make more sense actually, which you can actually stream directly from from instead of using any other devices to stream. I just want to squeeze, ooze that glue out of there because that joint went a bit crabby. Opened up a little bit, not too not too tight. Then I'm gonna put one across that way as well because I don't want to pull the frame out of square. Do a little bit that way, and I'll leave that. And I'll put that to one side as well because the Got it banging about, I accidentally opened the joint up a little bit. The others are okay. Um, but that shouldn't happen once these little slips in the corners here, three and four size corner joints, it won't be an issue anyway, that'll be fine. Anyway, at that stage, we'll be putting the, um, the other than finishing the frame with a bit of lacquer and what have you, we'll be inserting the picture. But like I was saying, with these types of projects, they're stages, so there might be multiple projects on at the same time. A bit like a friend of mine, he does um, woodworking videos. Um, live, um, Steve. It's called Woodworking Masterclass, but he's stopped doing it at the moment for some reason. Um, he's concentrating on his garden. <laughs> he's been doing it for some while. He's a really lovely, lovely man. He's funny as well. He's so, he's, you know, for an old gear, he's so excitable. I love people like that. Happy people. Brings your mood up instead of down. So, that is pretty much all I can do regarding those at the moment. But um, I've just uploaded a video regarding making a, um, a sign using the little palm router, which is literally this little one here. And it's quite a cheap little router. If anyone wanted to give it a go, it's definitely worth a buy. I'll put a link in the description actually on the other video. Um, and this is a Katsu, little Chinese import palm router. It's a copy of the Makita. These are about 30 euros, about 30 to 40 euros, depending where you, obviously depending on where you get it from. But there's, there's other makes as well, very, very similar. But this nice thing about this one is based on the Makita, and everything's interchangeable with, with the Makita routers. So this, this base is, so if you've got one base, you can use it on all your, all your equipment, which is quite cool. So then um, I had a fluted bit in here, and basically I hand routed um, a sign, but I printed the stuff off first, and used um, carbon paper to transfer the image. Um, it's only a small sign, it says Patreon. <laughs> what do I? <laughs> um, so yeah, these are only about 30 quid, they're really cheap, so if you want a, a cheap router, that is definitely a good bike. It's still quite powerful. I think they're about 800 watt, six, 800 watt. Oh, in the middle, 710 watts. And it has a fair, fair lot of whack to it, and it's also soft start as well. So it's definitely a good little bit of kit. Um, so that is it for me for now, until we have another go with these projects, but probably starting another one as well. I've got a few ideas of what to do. Um, and I know some people have actually had some ideas for me as things I can make, just simple, quick projects, you know, you know, it'd be a bit of fun. You know, any, anyone can do. And then I want to do some technique type stuff as well, but I might do them as video videos because I don't think they'd work as a live show. You can do a live show, I suppose. But it has to be, I think you have to have both. Anyway, I'm running on, and I thank everybody for, you know, watching, what have you. Sticking with us. But check out my video that I've just, uh, oh, what's that, that I just uploaded. It's pretty cool. I've been doing these new videos, like, um, oh, okay, Kit Kat, I think you're probably right. Yeah, hell awaits us in 2020. <laughs> 2022. It feels that way. There's some pretty awful things going to be happening, isn't there? Um, I don't see how they can delay it any further. I won't be surprised they try, but I, I, it's not exactly going to be compatible with the uh, WTO, is it? Yeah, that's basically what's happening, Kit Kat. I was um, when I'm really getting the flow of things again, I'm going to um, hopefully do it every single day other than the weekend, sort of five days a week. Um, and upload video videos over the weekend um, for this, this channel. I'll try and build it up again. So I got it to um, just over. Hello, oh, Pedas. How are you doing, buddy? Um, yeah, I, I did. I wanted to build, well, build up before. I got just over 2,000 subscribers, and then I was so busy on the other channel. And I stopped uploading to this one, which is a bit silly, really. It was starting to really sort of like quite rapidly grow, and uh, um, and what I found quite interesting is 
if I compare this channel to the other one, the other one, my click-through rate, have quite a high CTR, which basically means if an impression is made by YouTube, if um, the click-through rate is about 10%, so every one in 10 is clicking on the video to watch the video, which is pretty darn good. On this channel, it's only about 1%. Well, I was looking into it today because I didn't quite understand why that would be. I was like, oh, okay, I think I get it. 1%, that seems really low. But for this type of channel, apparently it's not because it because it's such a broad um, audience, such a huge potential audience, um, it would be offered up to a lot of people, but there'll be even more people be less likely to click on it because it's not, it doesn't, they might not be interested in that particular topic, if you know what I mean. Whereas if, you, if you're doing like shock politics and stuff, well, then obviously it's, Oh my god! <laughs> I did a bit of an experiment the other day actually. I kind of, uh, I, I, I does clickbait actually work? I did that one video and didn't really work at all. That was, that, that was a flop. But that one about the driving license one, um, that, that really, uh, uh, if you see, it just, it, it did really well that video did. And I thought to myself, you can't keep doing this, you get a bad reputation. But you can see why people do it, because obviously, if, if, is that what it takes to get your clicks? You know, to get the views on the video. How, how do you get the how do you get the audience if you don't have to do things that really feel you feel uncomfortable with? It just it's just nutty, isn't it? Really, it's like skinny dipping. Graham. <laughs> ah, so I got to ask you. So my work used to be. Only Makita cordless changed over to Milwaukee. Yeah, Milwaukee extremely good stuff, aren't they? I use a lot of their bits actually, Milwaukee bits. Uh, my son-in-law, um, well, ex-son-in-law, my got my, my my daughter's ex-boyfriend. Um, he's uh, he's used Milwaukee, good strong stuff. The Walt is definitely not what it used to be. It's really gone downhill. Makita's good though. For the you know, if you're talking about pr price value. Um, and the stuff is strong. I like Makita. You know, I've got a food Makita, I've got a big old Makita um, skill saw, and I've got the big old router over there, Makita. A couple of the battery drills, Makita. And they've all be, always been pretty good. No, there's no break on that saw. The saw's too old, Glasgow. But if I had people in there, I'd have to fit one. I'd have to do one for myself, no. Are you talking about the are you talking about the insert? No, that saw has never had. I've had loads of saws, and some are screwed um, inserts and some aren't. That one isn't. There's no provision to screw it down. There's two little nodules on the side that all you've got is the adjuster grub screws. There's no clamps, no nothing to hold that insert in place. I've had other saws like that as well. Pro, pro, pro type saws. Hope you missed anyone. Hello, Pete. How are you diddling? Uh, I think I said that already, didn't I? No, there's no break on that blade. I said that. I'm a gummy bear! <laughs> Hello, David. How are you doing, buddy? Now, is it David or is it David? I didn't, never really um, cleared that one up. I think it was David, isn't it? I might be wrong. Yeah, they've... Um, uh, oh, tag everything Minecraft. Do you know what? You, I could do that, um, Glasgow, on the videos. But when they find out, once their algorithm catches up with, they hammer you. It has to be on point. So everything you do, you must you know, regarding the video, it has to be to do with the video or the topic. Um, I've looked at this before, and it's um, spamming, isn't it? <laughs> Effectively, they don't like spamming. So, no, so anyway. I, I don't. I don't think I'll be doing that. The algorithm is get. Is, the thing is with um, YouTube now, they can. Act, they they know what the video is about. You, if you don't put nothing in the description, they know what the video is about. So unless you're talking in some bizarre language like I do, so you've got to put plenty of you know information in there. They get confused with my my accent, I think. But um, on the whole, they know pretty much what the video is about. They know the images in the video. If, if you're playing golf, they know you're playing golf. You know, they, they're so sharp now. And this is the same with um, regarding CEO for the CEO. Um, oh, web optimization. 
you know, for the um, blogs and what have you. And um, so I've got my blog page as well. And it's um, changing all the time. The algorithms, it's just another update. Another update. And we come some crazy name like Panda update or something like that, you know what I mean? And it's, um, it is frustrating. And there's a big one on big update or big change within YouTube on the 1st of June um, this year, just, yeah, so, yeah, that year, um, which was to include, basically, so you put adverts on all videos, not just people who are monetized, like myself, you've got your thousand subscribers and so many watch time hours and what have you. Um, you have to have enough um, yeah, so, so what they're doing is they're putting the videos on everything, not just for monetized people who are monetized to have videos like this channel or the other one, um, but they were doing it on, on, on everybody could have end up with videos on. So that gave, gave them that runoff, but what that did is dilute the, um, the pool of money for the, the channels that were monetized. So I know it was pretty much straight away on the 1st of June that my, it, my income plummeted. And I was earning more in um, April this year that I'm earning now. And the views, are, uh, although the views are up there, or they're not now, they were. They, uh, what happens was, on uh, when it, uh, the channel started to take a dive, I managed to build it up again. I went to Ginger Island and it plummeted. And then I was hammering it for like six videos a day at Ginger Island first thing in the morning. And um, then it, it revived again. I came back to France and then it plummeted again. And ever since, I've really struggled. I just can't seem to, to get it back up again. And it is really demoralising. But anyway, that's another story. That's one, one of the reasons why I'm doing this. <laughs> I'll try to build this one up. At least it's positive stuff and it's fun. I do like making things and sharing it with people. Make Minecraft figures. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, you just, that, I suppose I could. Yeah, you know, fool, are you? <laughs> yeah, well, then, yeah, I get your point. That's actually not a stupid idea, actually, is it? I get done on copyright instead. <laughs> oh dear. What's Roblox? I don't even know what that is. I don't know what Minecraft is, but I don't know what Roblox, Roblox, or Roblox. Nah, that's pretty cool. I know, cheap, quick, cheap. No retention either. Make Minecraft figures. Uh, that's, actually quite, that's quite funny, but also that's actually quite. That's actually quite a good idea. Only <laughs> thing I get a load of kids come to the channel. <laughs> they can a load of adults. Anyway, I digressed. I've got to get myself ready because we're going out tonight, sort of, before we get locked down. Because here in France, it looks like Macron is going to be. Um, that's a similar kind of thing. Is it? Oh, cheers, Lars. Um, they're going to have restrictions. At the very least, we're going to be having. Or curfew. So between eight at night and five o'clock in the morning, we're not allowed out. Got to black all the windows, drive around the slots in the headlights. But not supposed to drive out anyway. Drive about anyway. But no, we're going to um, have to be locked down somewhat. And also, it looks it's, it's either that or there could even be a full lockdown, like it was last time. So it quite concerned the way the rates are growing. And no, um, I know the BBC said that the majority of cases are Omicron, according to all the sites I've been looking at. No, it's not the case. 27% in, in Paris is Omicron. That's not all of France. And it's only 27% anyway. So. Oh, my God, no, dude. How are you feeling, buddy? Because obviously you had um, the virus, didn't you? You had the, coat, the, the dreaded. So everything hurts again. So um, anyway, hello, Duke. Um, so have you got and you got over it yet? I mean, you get long COVID. That'd be a bit of a bit of a shit, wouldn't it? Yeah, that won't be good at all. So yeah, it's just um, yeah, one of them things, isn't it? Anyway, I'm digressing again. I can't let go of you. I love you all too much. Don't leave me. <laughs> anyway, ta ta. <laughs> Off I go to get ready. Get rid of this dust that's got my nose. Actually, I've got a device that I use for that. And it's called a, a, a netty bottle. It's disgusting and I might have to do a video. 